Okay, so I hear you being very, very meticulous and, and on point with so many different parts of your life, whether it's the Baccarat, these businesses, et cetera. But there's only one game in the casino that you know, you're supposed to be able to win long term, which is poker. And I, I already complimented you and said that you, your aggression can be very, very good. But I wouldn't say that you are really approaching poker from the mentality of like, oh, I want to be extremely good at this. Like you, you play very, very loose. I'm sure you know that like a lot of the stuff that you're doing is stuff that pros would tell you to never do. Sure. Do you approach that a little bit differently than a lot of other things? So, um, like I've been as wreck as you can define the word wreck, a wreck poker player for like 20 years, right? Uh -huh. And what, what this is the real truth of it is when I was when I was living in Vegas and LA, right? But the times when I was in Vegas, I was living in these villas and in, in the casinos. So when quarantine happened and they shut me out, like they shut the whole world, they closed down. I came back to my house in LA. I was so bored. You know, that's also when I started social media because I was just so bored. And uh, my boy was like, yo, there's some poker games you can play and there's like girls there and stuff. And I was like, bet, like run that, right? Mm. So I started playing and I was like, even if there were small stakes, like, like some of the games I first were introduced introduced to were like five, five games. Right. We were playing the other day and you had 10 grand in front of you. And I know that don't really move you too much when it comes to gambling, right? Right. So even when I was playing these small stake games, I'm still competitive and I still want to win. Right. But I'm losing and I'm losing. I'm like, ah, I said, you know what? Let me study the game. Let me get a little sharper. And, you know, I had access to a lot of like uh, some of the top pros in history. And I, you know, I reached out a little. I was like. You know, tune me up, you know, tune me up, boss. And um, and really, and then, and then when Vegas opened back up, that's when my social media started blowing up. And then I was immediately being introduced to some of the highest stakes games on the face of the earth, poker-wise, right. right? And so I started playing in them because I just love to gamble. I'm a degenerate. The girls that are floating around those games are like, they, they don't even show in movies at the actual level of some of these games, the environment, the girls, the party, the food, like the, the whole situation. Wow. So I was like, bro, honestly, I was like, I would spend a million dollars to enter this club. I would, I would spend two, $3 million to be in this club for life. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So when I was losing in the beginning, sometimes I'd win, you know, but I was losing more than I was winning. And I was like, you know, this is not becoming that fun because like I already bought my lifetime membership in this club. I don't have to keep losing. Mm. So I started tuning up quite a bit and I started recentering. Um, I'm not to this day, I'm not like filed as a professional poker player. I am a professional gambler mm. and a professional Baccarat player and a professional blackjack player. You file as that, you mean taxes? Yeah, so my, my taxes are a professional gambler, right? Wow. There, there's, a, there's a special way I have to file based on that so I can scrub wins and losses and there's also different types of write-offs. Um, you know, I have to pay into like the Medicaid and Medicare funds and there's different ways when I file taxes now. Mm. Uh, but I'm not uh, like officially a poker pro, right? And um, uh, in, in poker, I was not a favorite, but in the casino, I am a favorite to win the Baccarat or Blackjack. Right. So sometimes when it came to like um, decompartmentalizing my finances and accounting for my gambling funds, right, for me to offset my poker losses, which I guess in the grand scheme are pretty massive, I would have to go to Vegas and, and try to win it just so I can justify the loss or the continued <clears throat> loss in, in poker games. Mm -hmm. um, but as I started fine tuning my poker game, as well as playing less, I used to play like every day because it was just dope environments. And I think I was really like star blinded, you mm -hmm. know, like starstruck. You know, I, I was playing with a lot of celebrities and I still do, but just this whole environment for me being from the East Coast, not in that life. It was really something. I could easily sit down and play live poker for like 10 fucking hours in a row because you just want to keep seeing the next hand. And it just keeps like, there's no end in sight. That's one thing I like about tournaments is when the tournament's over, the tournament's over. It takes fucking forever, but at least there's an end point. I'm lucky, honestly, that I have enough shit going on in my life that like getting home and going to bed at a reasonable hour is pretty much like 100% I have to because the fucking kid's going to be smacking me in the face at 5 in the morning and I got to be at the office at a certain time, etc. But yeah, there's definitely something about it that's easy to just like completely just go for it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I think my style of just liking to gamble and just like having that itch, right, getting my dick hard, um, helped me in a lot of ways because the poker pros who are familiar with playing by a certain structure are now faced with something super unique that usually cannot be bankrolled the way I'm bankrolling it. And mm. they weren't really sure how to address me. 
And so there was like a, a, a turning point where I fine tuned my game um, into what is my comfortable style uh -huh. uh, and, and some other external factors that really allowed me to now become a favorite in many of the games I play. There was one hand in particular that I saw where basically I think Andy went all in at uh, the Hustler and there was a lot of money and you sat there for a while and thought about it and then you made this huge call with ace 10 off and he had jacks and i mean that's not like a call that i really expect almost any poker player to make and it, I, I was really watching just thinking i'm like okay so is he doing this to set a precedent so that everybody knows at the table that he's willing to make a call that's super super thin because like best case scenario you're against you know sevens or you're against king queen where you have like a very small advantage uh or are you just you don't give a fuck or were you just like having enough fun with it that like you didn't really give a shit in that moment like i was kind of like watching that trying to like decode like what exactly is his motivation here so my motivation on that exact hand right was that hand did not happen in the beginning of the game that hand had happened like quite some way into the game and oh, i had been God. watching andy play this whole time mm. he was running bad but in addition he was really emotional in his play Andy's a great player, he's a sharp player, he's a poker pro, no question. Mm. But whatever had happened that day, he really was allowing his emotions to get the best of him, right? So it became really easy to exploit some of his weaknesses, mm. which the hardest way to exploit a weakness is pre-flop because there's such limited data to offer you, right? So I was really just having conversation with him. And if you watch like the full clip, you'll see I'm talking to him a lot at the table, which I did with you, for example, when we played, when you had those pocket nines and ended up folding. And I, and I liked my hand, but... Um, and in that table talk, he seemed to open up some other weaknesses mm. where I really was just trying to gauge it. I did ask him if he had pocket aces. If he had pocket aces, I'm drawing dead and there's no gamble there. I'm just literally, I should just slide the money to him. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip and you want to see more, this is our new clips channel. Help us get to 10,000 subscribers. Hit subscribe down below. Appreciate y'all.